practical realization of the world. In Matthew 10, in verse 16, the Bible says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep into the midst, in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will, in verse 17, they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. Verse 20, For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. In verse 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. In this passage, Jesus was preparing his disciples to go out without him. He was preparing them for the time that he was going to leave the earth to go and prepare a mansion for them. And he told them he would come back again. And if it weren't so, he wouldn't have told them so. But before he sends them out, he prepares them. Think about it. To the point of this passage, before they realize that Jesus Christ was going to go up without them, they're in the mindset, they're arguing about who's going to be the, the greatest in the kingdom of God, and, and they're thinking about all the pomp and pride that comes with being with Jesus Christ. They got in on ground level, so to speak. They, they followed him before the masses came to him. They followed him before he had really established that he could do great miracles and before he had, had become a name in all the earth. They were following him in the beginning. And so these men thinking that, wow, he's really becoming somebody and, and we're followers of him. We're the inner circle. Surely when he becomes great, when he establishes his throne, that we're going to be great. People in the world, they're going to come and they're going to follow him. They're going to, we're going to tell him, look, you just got in now. You go away to the back of the line. We're up here because we followed him before it mattered. So they're all excited about it. Well, suddenly they're king is telling them, I'm going, to send, I'm going to send you out without me. As Jesus Christ prepares them, he explains to them, listen, it's not going to be a bed of roses from this point on. I'm no longer going to be with you. I'm not going to be here to, to scare everybody off, to, to reason with them. Now you're the one that's going to stand before them and give an account of what you're saying. You're the one that's going to have to explain to them to preach Jesus Christ. And that's not going to be received well. They're going to hate you because they hate me. They're going to scheme against you because they scheme against me. They're going to bring you before the synagogues. They're going to mock you. They're going to beat you. They're going to be cruel to you. And you're going to think that you can take it before magistrates. You can take it before the governors. You can take it before the kings. Surely the justice system will deliver you from all these beatings, will deliver you and protect you and give you your rights. But even they will conspire against you. Even they are going to leave you out in the cold. Even they are going to turn you over to the masses. Nobody is going to come to your defense. But you serve me. You beware of those men. You watch for yourselves. But you go out and you preach Christ. Don't let those things discourage you. As a youth pastor, I can only think, I don't want to introduce sin I don't want to introduce concepts of what the world's doing. I think what the world is doing is trash, and I'll set no evil thing before my eyes. And so I don't want to introduce concepts to teenagers that they otherwise wouldn't have thought of. But as a youth pastor, to introduce them to say, there are traps out there that Satan has set. The wise man will see the trap and will hide himself from it. But the simple pass on and are punished as a youth pastor, to explain to them, listen, you live in a world full of wolves. You live in a world full of deceivers. You live in a world that they wait for very, the very second that they can snap you up in a snare. They set the net as the hunter sets a net for the fowl. They're out there and they're waiting for you. And the second you slip up, the second you give an inch, they're ready for you. As Jonathan Edwards explained in Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, Satan already has his arrow bent. He's already got his arrow drawn back and his bow is bent. And at any second, he waits to release it at the heart of the Christian who's not prepared. 
teenagers, don't be naive to that. My heart for a teenager is to explain to them a practical realization to not be ignorant of the world's devices, but at the same time, not to be clever about what it is. It's not a, a joy to know what sin is. It's not a joy, not something to be proud of, to say, I know all that the world does. I'm up on the latest of everything they do. It's not a joy. Don't glory in sin. But be aware that there are traps set for you. As a youth pastor, that's my life goal, is to make sure that Satan doesn't eliminate Christians at the race before they even got in and ran. To keep them with a practical realization of what the world's devices are. So that when those things come up, it's not a surprise, it's not a shock, it doesn't catch their attention unawares, but that they're watching for it, they're ready, so when it hits them, like a wave in the ocean hits you, if you're ready for it, you stand against it. But if your back is to the wave as it hits you, it knocks you off balance and you fall over. And it's hard to get up when those waves are coming when you weren't ready because one comes and then another comes behind it and another behind that. You need a sure footing. You need a solid foundation to stand on. You need a practical realization of what the world's devices are. So as a teenager understands a, a, a practical a working relationship, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, as we develop them and point them to a relationship with their parents, as the parents have a desire to serve the Lord, they have a, a profitable rearing in the home. Finally, as we prepare them to send them out in the world to make a difference, to let their light so shine before men that they may see their good works and glorify their Father which is in heaven, as we send them out to be a beacon to a lost and a dying world, to make an impact for the cause of Christ, to pre prepare them with a practical realization of the distractions that await them. And as they're aware of that, as they're equipped, as they know, as they're, they're ready in a time of trouble to run to Jesus Christ, because He's our refuge, He's our rock, He's our fortress, He's a shade by day, defense by night. In a time of trouble, we can run to Him. As teenagers are equipped with that battle plan to go out, when those snares are set for them, it doesn't, it doesn't dissuade them. It doesn't pull them away from their focus. Instead, it draws them closer to Jesus Christ because they know how that relationship functions. So, in a heartbeat, my heart for teenagers is to help them to be aware of what's out there. According to About.com, in the next 24 hours, 1,439 teens will attempt suicide. 2,795 teenage girls will become pregnant. And 15,006 teens will use drugs for the first time in the next 24 hours. My heart for teenagers is that they would find the joy, the satisfaction, the completion that fills that void in their heart in Jesus Christ, that they wouldn't desire those things, that they would know what it is to have a profitable rearing in the home, to have a close-knit family, that as a family draw together as they, they serve around the throne of Jesus Christ, and then to have a practical realization of the world, to know that all those traps exist, but to know that they don't want anything to do with them. That's my heart for teenagers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.